What we're going to do is uh, I'm going to talk about about work-life balance. And as I started to say, when I was in Mexico, I was living on my boat. It was really hard sometimes because you you were just working from morning till till night just normally because you're in a startup and and that's something that's very common because you have a lot of work to do when you're getting a company started and Evernote was no different than anything else especially especially when we first started getting off the ground there were only eight employees we all had our own jobs to do there was no backup so as soon as i opened up my laptop in the morning any work that I hadn't finished the day before uh, was still waiting for me with a pile of, of even more to do. And um, it doesn't allow you to take breaks. I mean, you obviously need to be, take breaks to be more productive, but th that, there's that mental thing within you that says, I need to keep going. I need to do this because if I don't do this, then the work's just going to like be a never ending pile. Somebody told me once that you just keep chipping away at Everest, but if, if it's this Herculean task where it's impossible because no matter what you do, you're never going to even make a dent in Everest. There's, there's, it's not going to happen. So for me, it was even more of a, a thing because I was sitting there alone in my boat. So if ever you've been on a boat, these are very tiny, claustrophobic cabins that, that you're in. Some people may, may have been on a cruise ship. And when you got into your room, you're like, oh, this is the smallest hotel room I've ever been in. Well, if you're on a sailboat, <laughs> think about the bathroom on a cruise ship. And that's about the size of your bedroom or any of the cabins on a boat. So I'm working from a closet and it's, it's dark. It's tiny and and in the summer, it's oppressively hot and humid. It was about 110 degrees and 90% humidity outside. So I didn't have any option to leave that area. I, I basically had to stay inside. I mean, this was my choice. I was in Mexico on purpose. I was in my boat on purpose. I made this choice to be there. I understand. I was entirely my choice. But the only thing that I really could do was stay inside in, in an air conditioned closet during the day. And if you're inside, then you might as well work. So this, this was my rationale. And I just kept working. I would wake up at six in the morning. I'd look at this pile of, of work coming in and keep working. And I'm sure some of you listening to this are, are starting to, to see similarities in your own work. There, most people can't feel the claustrophobic thing that I was in, but sometimes you put yourself in this, especially if you're a remote worker. Like you, your, your cubicle at work may feel this claustrophobic. You may find that everything you do is this slog that you have to get through. And, and for me, I wouldn't even get out of my pajamas. I would, I would wake up in bed, pull up my laptop, and then start working from like 6 a.m. Soon it would be like 11 p.m. I'd still be in my pajamas. I wouldn't have gotten out of bed because it was just, it was too much of an effort to go anywhere and do anything but work. And I'd get terrible headaches. I was neglecting my health. All I could think about was getting the work done. And not only that, I found that I was just working seven days a week because it became this stress loop of if I don't get this done, if I don't answer these emails, if I don't write this code, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't, whatever thing was, that we won't be successful, that we won't get to this unicorn valuation. One of the things that I, I talk about in the book is how did I manage to break out of that? Because it's obviously unhealthy, this picture that I'm painting. Um, and some of you struggle with that. 
I absolutely know that some of you that are listening to this right now are struggling with that very same thing. And you're wondering, am I ever going to get out of this? How am I going to get out of this? How am I going to save myself? Because you, you can't see beyond the fact that you have to keep doing this. You have to keep doing that because if nobody, like if you aren't the one that's doing this, if you're not the one working, if you're not the one that's answering all these questions, taking care of your business, building it, then you're never going to reach that level of success. Just sit me down basically and say, you're not happy and you're killing yourself. You're making your health not a priority and that's not helping anyone. Eventually your work is going to suffer because you're going to crash. You're going to get worse at what you're doing and that's not going to help. And then we're going to lose you, the asset that is dependent on everything. So what we had to do was we hired help, hired help for me, which actually I didn't want to do as well because I knew that was going to take time away from this, this pile that kept growing and growing and growing. And you know what? It did keep growing and growing and growing, but it was okay because it grew for a little bit, but then I had help. And then it started to go down. And then now that there were two people working on it, we were able to get three people to work on it. And it was a good thing that we had the ability to get two people to work on it because you know what happened? Because now there were two people working on it, people were happier, customers were happier with the turnaround time. And we actually started making more money. And once we had three people working on it, I was able to take weekends off. And so I went from 16 hours a day to 11 hours a day to 11 hours a day, five days a week to eventually, I actually, at five years in, I was able to take golf lessons. And this was such an amazing thing for me. I was so excited because I could take Friday afternoons off to take golf lessons. This only lasted for like four weeks before something big happened. But I just remember being able to to do this. It was so, so exciting. You can't pull out of it yourself necessarily. But you do need to recognize that if you're in this, you aren't the only person that can do the thing that you're doing. And you will be more productive if you actually take less time. If you let things sit for a minute, then you can actually do better because your customers will be more happy if you're more happy. If you take that time for yourself, then you will be better. It will reflect in the work that you do and you will become on the path to more success. So that's really what I wanted to cover today. And throughout this book, you really see that there's a journey to the self-discovery of what it takes to understand in yourself what's making you unhappy, what that thing is that will find that balance for you. If you do take that time uh, and, and really work on yourself, then whatever your business is will grow and it will reach your level of success. Um, if anyone is in that level of, of loneliness and isolation, please reach out to me so that we can have an open discussion about it. But I, I really think that if you're stuck in that that place it's it's such a lonely lonely place and it's really hard to find somebody to talk to if, if even if you have a partner because a lot of people will see you and they'll think oh that that person is in a bad place but at least they have somebody there to talk to and my husband was was with me all the time but he didn't notice that anything was wrong not in a failure of him but because he was just as busy himself and when you're with somebody every day, you don't necessarily notice 
the, the gradual changes that happen in them. It really takes an outside person to see that something is going wrong. 